Good morning. Good morning. It doesn't matter where you are. I want, if you're hearing the sound of my voice, you are alive. And it's not a small thing to wake up, be alive. We here at the Daily Huddle were committed that the way you start your day give you the rest of your day and the way you live your day gives you the rest of your life. And today is no exception. I've got a question for Andrea, though, before we launch this. <laughs> What's up, Zorel? Andrea, you and I, you know, we love accountants, don't we? Oh, we, dearly. Dearly, dearly. So uh, what did the boss say to the accountant when he dropped a brownie on the paperwork? <laughs> That's very specific situations, or I have no idea. He looked at him and said, man, quit fudging the numbers. Oh. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> All right, all right. I've never been accused of being funny. <laughs> I have never been accused of being funny. But guess what? <laughs> you can accuse me of being thoroughly excited about today's conversation. Today's conversation is anchored in this question. How to awaken the genius in your company and walk among giants? and it has nothing to do with money. That's this conversation. But before we get into the conversation, I have a few questions for you beautiful people. Oh my God, Chase is on video. Come on, Chase, welcome. Good morning. Uh, tell me, Chase, where are you and who will you hug today? Ooh, almost, almost was not here. Uh, <laughs> I am here, right where I'm supposed to be, and I will hug myself today. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's nothing selfish about self-love. Because in a world so where we are one, to love oneself is to love all. And Chase, I love you, my friend. Welcome home. I love you back. Good from morning. Me. Good morning. Stand the man. Yes, sir. <laughs> what time is it? And what are you grateful for? Whoa, you know, I don't have my watch on Sorrel, but you know what I do know? The time is now. It's the only time there is. And I'm grateful for having this now. I didn't have to have it. That is awesome. That is awesome. And Andrea, you know, since I abused you with the jokey question, I'll give you this one. How are you, my friend? My friend, I am the way I say I am. And today, I'm a student of the world. That's how I am. I'm a student. <laughs> well, as a student of the world, I am so delighted to partner with you and everyone here on The Daily Huddle today to create this conversation. How to awaken the genius in your company and walk among giants, and it has nothing to do about money. Now, even though this question has the word company in it, if you take the word company out and say, how to awaken the genius within me, how to awaken the genius within others and walk among giants, it fits, right? So what I wanna share with you is a four-step iterative process that's designed to do just that. And I'm claiming that uh, growing for oneself and growing a company or having people around you that are giants and grow into giants may not be as difficult as we think it is. It may just be the opportunity to apply this four-step iterative process that I'm about to share with you. I have no slide. We're going to create it on the fly. And here's step one. I'm going to say the four steps out loud 
And then we're going to take time to sink our teeth into each of them, and then we'll open it up for questions. It's an iterative process. The first step is to create compelling future that is just outside of reach. That's step one. Step two, create an action plan that you say right now will achieve that future. And step three, take the very first small action in that iterative approach. And step four, celebrate the ground you've taken after taking that action. Now, there's something really specific here. Notice I didn't say celebrate the action or the results you've achieved. I said celebrate the ground you've taken. Those are the four steps. Create a compelling future, create an action plan that you say will achieve that future. Take the first small action and celebrate the ground you've taken. So let's talk about step one. Create a compelling future. Now, what is a compelling future that is just outside of reach? Have you ever taken a vacation and say to yourself, and your wife, and your significant other, or your family, you know what, we're going to the Mediterranean in September. That's exactly what my wife said to me two days ago. She said, honey, we've got a vacation plan. We're taking a Mediterranean cruise for nine days. Now, the moment she said that, guess what happened in my head? I began to think about what I'd be wearing I began to think about what we're going to be eating, what we're going to be drinking. So creating a compelling future that's just outside of reach for yourself, for your life, and for your business is just as simple as that. I'm advising to not go for the big, gigantic future that leaves me or you disempowered because it's so big. I can't even envision the first step. Because see, for that vacation that's going to be nine days on a cruise boat, the very first action was pretty simple. Put down the deposit. Now imagine your life, imagine your business, and imagine a future. And it has to be a future that's just outside of your reach. If it's just outside of your reach, it's gonna get you excited. So the emotional connection that you and I need and that others who are working with us need to get connected to a goal that is slightly bigger than what we believe we can achieve happens automatically when the goal is really something you want, when that future is really something you want, and yet you create it just outside of your reach. And when you create it just outside of your reach, it has the capacity to pull you and call you into being in a way that no ordinary future would. That's the point about creating a compelling future that's just outside of your reach. And when you create it just outside of your reach, it begins to pull you forward and have you act and have you be someone that is just outside of your reach. And when I say just outside of your reach, what I mean is the future I'm creating is a future that's achievable, attainable, and yet I don't think I can do it given what I know that I know and the resources I know I have currently. So it's just outside of my reach, but I can do it. And then I create an action plan. That's step two, to get there. Now, I'm fond of saying, if you're around me for long, you'll hear me say, transformation. While transformation has a lot to do with mindset, action has a lot to do with giving me, giving you the opportunity to see myself differently. But see, when I take a small action, that's connected to a future I want, 
And that small action produces something. I don't know. It's going to produce a result. Any action I take will produce a result. That small action gives me the opportunity to begin to know myself as that person that's just outside of my reach. So the iterative process, the, the iterative approach I'm talking about is an approach to transforming myself, to transforming others, to transforming an environment anchored in the creation of the future I want, the creation of a plan, taking a small action that moves me in the direction of the fulfillment of that future, and at once moves me in the direction of the fulfillment of the being I aspire to be. Now, we've taken three steps so far. One, create a compelling future. Two, build a plan of action. Three, take the first small action. And what you've achieved so far is nothing more, nothing less than the beginning of not just believing, but embodying that I can have that future. I can take the action that I need to take to achieve that future. And I can be the being that I aspire to be when I take that future. So now there's a second aspect to uh, the question. How to create growth and walk among giants? Now, how we walk among giants is through acknowledgement. After I've taken the action or after someone on my team has taken the action, I acknowledge them. But here's the twist. Most of us think that acknowledgement has to do with me complimenting you or acknowledging you or me celebrating myself or acknowledging myself for what I've accomplished. Nope. It doesn't really work that way. The type of acknowledgement that I'm talking about that creates and builds giants around me, that creates me for myself, as a giant, is the type of acknowledgement that acknowledges me, not for what I've done, but for what I will do, because I have become for myself someone I didn't think I could be. So the acknowledgement I'm talking about acknowledges the way of being that I or someone else or my team had to generate to take the small action. And sometimes they or I or you don't generate that way of being to take the action. You take the action and by virtue of the result you produce, whether that result is good or bad, there is ground that you take in being. And it is the acknowledgement of the ground taken in being that positions you, that positions me, that positions your team to be giants, not because they were giants or were born as giants, but because the action they're taking and your acknowledgement of the ground they've taken by taking the action begins a process where I, you, they start believing that we are giants. That iterative process is simple, but when you put it down to paper for your business, when you put it down on paper for your life, when you put it down on paper for your marriages, when you put it down on paper for anything you're up to, whether it's uh, you losing weight, whether it's you uh, achieving a financial goal you want, those four steps are iterative because guess what? By the time you get back to step four, 
where you've acknowledged the ground that you've taken, where you are acknowledging your team for the ground they've taken, where you're acknowledging yourself for the ground you've taken in being someone you didn't think you could be, you're right back at step one and you're ready to review the future. Because the moment you take an action, it doesn't matter what result that action produces, whether you succeed wildly in taking that action, whether you fail miserably in taking that action, that doesn't matter. What matters is the being you got to be, whether you learn the lesson or achieve the phenomenal result. There's still the acknowledgement of the being you became for yourself and the being your team members became for themselves. So when that happens, the future I'm able to conceive becomes bigger. So it's necessary that I review the future and I tweak the future just a tad. You know, the frequency of doing this work in terms of taking the iterative approach to creating growth and unleashing genius and building giants around you could be a weekly thing. What could be a something you do every other week or something you do monthly, it doesn't matter. Depending on the size and the, uh, the magnitude of the project you created for yourself, you'll know. And by the time you get around to step number four, you'll be bigger. The future you can conceive will be bigger. So you review and tweak the future. After you've reviewed and tweaked the future, you review and tweak the action plan. Because by virtue of the lessons you've learned and the ground you've taken, there are new actions to take that you couldn't conceive before. So you take those actions now. And after taking the next small action, you acknowledge yourself, you acknowledge your team, you acknowledge your mate, you acknowledge whoever is implicated in the project as your stakeholders. And what you're acknowledging isn't the accomplishment. What you're acknowledging is the way of being, the leader, the leadership that emerged, that was born from taking that small action consistent with the fulfillment of a future you want that is just, just, always just outside of your reach. And then coming right back. That iterative process, my friends, is the life that you can live that is an invented life, not a life that we live by default. So in that space, if you forget yourself for a moment, and you think of the people around you that you're working with, you think of your company, you think of your business, you think of your church, you think of your family, any organization you're in, your ticket to awakening the genius and walking among giants is this iterative approach. That approach assumes this. That's an assertion I'm making. Organizations don't grow on their own. Organizations grow because a future just outside of its reach was created. An action plan, a project embodying actions to be taken to achieve that future was written down and put on paper. And then people like you, like me, took those actions and put them on our calendars and then we gave those actions the permission to rule our lives. And we take the next action. And in taking that next action, there's a way of being that gets engendered automatically. And when you acknowledge that way of being for another, when you, when you acknowledge that way of being for yourself, you create this kind of snowball effect. Can you imagine living a life where month after month, week after week, year after year, decade after decade, 
you're going through this process of inventing a future that's just outside of your reach, creating a plan to achieve that, taking a small action that confirms for you, for others, and for the world that you are the giant you don't think you can be. And then acknowledging the ground you've taken and doing that over and over and over and over and over. What's possible if you take that on? That's my invitation for you today. It's not an invitation just for today. It's an invitation for the rest of your life. You can live and walk among giants. I want to hear from you. What are you hearing from this? What are you creating for yourself? Uh, yeah, buts, you name it, questions. I want to have this conversation with you. Are you there? Well, I try not to be the only one to speak up sometimes, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> I was trying to well, you know, you know what, it, Tara, hang on one second, and I'll just say this. Uh, there's nothing, you've taught me this, there's nothing wrong with the silence. And I assert that in the silence that was there just before you spoke, people on Facebook around the world and here in the Zoom room were confronting uh, what it could be. And so thank you for speaking up, Tara. What do you want to say? And, and thank you for that reminder, because yeah, there's a lot of magic in silence. Um, but my really question is personal to you. What is it about you that keeps this fire alive? Like, how is it that you own this type of mentality? Oh, gosh, I love that question. You know, uh, I've, uh, what keeps the fire alive Tara, it's not, it's not that I'm special, that I have this special fire burning inside of me. It's, uh, it's in the practice. The practice helps me keep it alive. Uh, a, few, a few days ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I was in a conversation with you and the rest of the team. And uh, I mentioned how sometimes I get discouraged because uh, the future I've created uh, can be so big, so daunting that uh, I want to recoil and walk away from the domination of what I've created. And yet I find that in practicing these four steps, I'm always returned back to the passion. I'm always returned back to a reminder that I can be bigger than who I think I am. And I'm always returned back to that people around me can be bigger than I believe them to be. So I would say that the secret sauce is really in the practicing itself. What a practicing. fantastically empowering answer. Yeah. Because I know we tend to say either I'm like that or I'm not like that. And there is a lot of power in just saying I'm becoming more like that every day. Yeah. And some days I fall short and some days I nail it and then I might take a step backwards and that's all part of it. Yeah, that's all part of it. And and that that third step dealing with acknowledging the ground taken. Uh, uh, you practice with me a lot, Tara. And once a month we have a meeting where I, I point to Tara because I know it irks her. And I say, Tara, what, what would you like to be acknowledged for? <laughs> and Awkward. <she> goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she squirms, right? <laughs> so in, in the context where acknowledgement has always been about accomplishment, there's always in the back of my mind, at the back of your mind, this, this need to be, you know, I'm going to be humble. I'm going to step back and not brag. However, when acknowledgement is not about the accomplishment, there's no bragging. There's simply creating and acknowledging the ground you're taking in being someone that you think is just outside of your reach. 
And in the practice as leaders of, of acknowledging people that way, you can actually acknowledge anybody, anytime. In business, in life, mostly, I'll wait until you accomplish something great. I'll wait until you accomplish something worthy, and then I'll acknowledge you. That world does not create giants. That world relies on the accomplishment to tell you how the person is being. If you flip it on its ear and you invent the being you want, then you and that person begin to believe that, oh, I'm actually really like that. And then if you're taking a small action that's consistent with that way of being, and it's iterative, mm -hmm. the snowball effect begins to create you, create your, the world around you as those giants who are capable of anything. Thank you, Tara. Andrea. I was thinking while you were speaking with Tara about the, the power of moving away from binary thinking. It's not just that we are this or that. We can be both at the same time. So I don't know if you, I wanted to, to explore with you if you have thought about that when you were preparing for this, because the steps sound like that you didn't say it but they sound you don't have to be this or that you can be both at the same time so I wanted to see your thoughts about moving away from this binary thinking that we grew up with it's not anymore yeah and and you know in fact you're saying binary and then you're also saying we can be both uh I'm saying this right now maybe we're none of it you actually don't have to be great, and you're not. You actually don't have to suck, and you don't. You can just be a human being practicing, growing, and being. So in taking the iterative steps, Andrea, you're not taking the iterative steps as someone who's good or bad, great, or whatever. You're taking the iterative steps to discover something about you and your way of being. So in, in that approach, step number three is really critical. The step where you're acknowledging the ground taken. And it's not the ground taken like I've accomplished this and it's great. No, it's the ground taken in being. Something like, God, man, I was so afraid before I stepped into this. And now that I've done it, I realize that I didn't die. <laughs> and, uh, and maybe I could do it again. And something magical happens in the process is that what looks and feels iterative and what looks and feels incremental builds upon itself. And then all of a sudden, a big boom happens and you go, what, what happened? It feels and looks like a miracle, but it's not. It's just in the nature of who we are. Somebody had their hand up. That was you, Rashida. Good morning, good morning, sir. Good morning, David Hodges. Can you hear me? Hear? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, thank you so much for listening. I've been listening to you guys. I'm sitting at the house with my boyfriend. And one of the things that I have learned from the whole, I like to say, the nugget that you let go at, at all, is that I always say to people when I endeavor anything in my business, uh, we, there is no footprint or fingerprint that will lead us to the right direction. And in any endeavor, motherhood, fatherhood, grandmother, sisterhood. We don't come with, with print. We have to make up of our print as we go on. And this is one of the things that I understood from what you explained in this morning. We have to go step by step. Oh, we did a boo-boo. Move on. 
keep it going, keep it moving. I take that and I'm going to run with it. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, Rashida, run with it, girl, run with it. You know, uh, they, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say what you're saying because I love it so much is that there is no path. There is only the path that we create by walking. So thank you for creating and charting your own path. I want to acknowledge the presence of my brother in the room. Giovanni, good morning. And uh, good morning. I, I'm moved right now because just because you're here. Because it's the conversation that you and I had last night that created today's conversation. And uh, I want to put you, I want to acknowledge you for being the source of transformation on the planet. Thank you, Sorel. Yeah. Thank you, Sorel. Well, folks, gosh, I could stay here forever. <laughs> uh, I love Monday mornings. I love Tuesday mornings. I love Wednesday mornings. I love Thursday mornings. I love Friday mornings. I love the daily huddle. I love you. And I love the ground I'm taking as a leader because you're around me. And we're going to end our show today. And uh, I bid you goodbye, but it's just goodbye because I can't wait to see you on Monday morning. Our seven plus one tenets are love, laugh out loud, eat mostly plant-based. The emphasis is on mostly. <laughs> <laughs> stress less and if you put the emphasis on mostly you will stress less you may stress less you know life is not that significant it's just one future one plan one action one acknowledgement at a time give rest and shake what your mama gave you. And uh, if you think you're doing all right, well, check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> this is our show. My name is Sorel Kitan. This is The Daily Huddle. The co-founder of The Daily Huddle is Giovanni Gonzalez, who's transforming the world in Houston. I'll see you on Monday. Beautiful, Sorrel. Beautiful, Thank beautiful. you for making my Friday. <laughs> See you guys awesome. on Monday. Awesome, awesome. Have a great weekend.